Mr. Beat presents Supreme Court Briefs. Cambridge, Massachusetts, 1902. Henning Jacobson, a local minister, refuses to be vaccinated for smallpox by the city's board of health. Now, smallpox is one of the most awful and devastating diseases in human history. Even though Edward Jenner had discovered a vaccine to help prevent smallpox back in 1796, in 1902, the average mortality rate for the disease was as high as 25 to 30 percent. In fact, between around 1902 until when it was finally eradicated thanks to the World Health Organization in the late 1970s, smallpox killed an estimated 300 million people around the world. As much of a threat as smallpox still was in 1902, Jacobson didn't think it was worth it to get vaccinated. You could call him an anti-vaxxer of sorts. You see, Jacobson grew up in Sweden where they had a law that required all children get vaccinated for smallpox. So yeah, as a child, Jacobson got the vaccine as well, but later claimed the vaccine caused him, quote, great and extreme suffering that he had to deal with permanently. Later, his son also went through, quote, adverse, adverse effects effect. after getting the vaccine as a child. And thus, Jacobson and his wife both were like, nah, -uh, nope no more vaccines. Meanwhile, the state of Massachusetts had passed a law saying city boards of health could force their citizens to get vaccinated, quote, when, when necessary, necessary for public, public health, health or, or safety. safety. Cambridge, which had seen a surge in smallpox outbreaks in June, forced everyone to get the smallpox vaccine or face a fine of $5, which is around $150 today. Now, the vaccine was not guaranteed to last your entire life, so adults who were vaccinated as children had to get vaccinated again. Despite many of his neighbors dying from smallpox, Jacobson still refused to get vaccinated again, and the city fined him. Others also refused and appeared in court together in July. Jacobson argued the vaccine was an, quote, invasion, invasion of, his of his liberty. liberty. Eh, they made him pay the fine anyway. He and others appealed to the Massachusetts Supreme Court, but it agreed with Cambridge. So Jacobson appealed again, this time to the Supreme Court, who heard oral arguments on December 6th, 1904. Jacobson and his lawyers brought up the almighty 14th Amendment, saying the Massachusetts law requiring vaccination overstepped personal liberty and could lead to more government control of individual behaviors. The court announced their decision on February 20th, 1905. They sided with Massachusetts. It was seven to two. While the court agreed that individual liberties were important, public safety and the state's obligation to get rid of smallpox were both more important. Those who did not get vaccines literally endangered the lives of others, and ultimately the court decided that forced vaccinations were a legitimate way to protect the lives of citizens. Justice John Marshall Harlan gave the opinion, and he acknowledged there could be exceptions. Harlan said certain folks folks may indeed be harmed by forced vaccinations and therefore should be exempt. However, Jacobson couldn't prove he fell in this category. Harlan also pointed out that citizens could never be forced to be vaccinated. They could be fined, but not forced. Jacobson v. Massachusetts set a precedent that sometimes the freedom of the individual has to be limited in the name of the general welfare, and that sometimes states could use their police power in the name of public safety. Courts across the country have upheld compulsory vaccination ever since. The anti-vaccine movement only grew after this case with the founding of the Anti-Vaccination League of America three years later. Today, there is still a vocal group of folks who are opposed to vaccines of various kinds. Last year, a prominent organization declared the anti-vaccine movement as one of the top 10 global health threats. That organization, the same one that eradicated smallpox 40 years ago, the World Health Organization. I'll see you for the next Supreme Court case, jury. So what do you think? Should vaccines be mandatory in all cases? In some cases? 
and no cases? Let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I'd say this case is pretty darn relevant these days. It's another classic greater good versus personal liberty battle. Gotta love it. And finally, a special shout out to my Calvin and Coolidge Patreon supporters at 10 bucks a month, Laughlin McGregor and Pat Randolph. Thanks guys and thank you for watching, you vaccinated humans.